Um, first things first, there's a lot of brass material in that. That's all the oil out of the filter, so you can see that. And um, yeah, there's a bit of bit, few chunks of. I think it's hard facing. Is that maybe? hard facing or a bit of brass? Well, no, that's brass. brass. But um, the bigger issue is this part of a bearing came through, was in the bottom of the filter here. Well, good morning everybody. It is another beautiful morning. Um, we are probably, we're probably sitting at maybe 20 degrees Celsius, something like that, and it is just beautiful. I am in the Rogator, um, and in the previous video, we were working on the Housem a bit, and that still needs a bit of work. It's uh, the rain dried up, and there's paddock work to be done, so the brad and filler on the dozers, um, and Josiah's rock picking. I think Johnny might be offsetting on one of the new lease blocks we're doing. Um, and yeah, so there's quite a bit of paddock work to do, but the house or grasshopper as we call it, isn't ready obviously to spray. And there's about maybe 200 hectares or so that I need to spray down at um, the development block. So it is about a, oh, I think it's about 40, 45 Ks or something like that away. Um, so yeah, it's a fair hike, but it's um it's a bit you feel a bit safer in this thing um, as opposed to the grasshopper because I actually have a bonnet if I something happens I'm just a little bit more protected here like on the grasshopper if something happens you'll go flying straight through there so um, yeah so I'll put the seatbelt on that's always a good idea Well, we made it, which, yeah, it's a pretty good time actually. It might only be a little bit under an hour, I think. But one thing I gotta do is, um, I've gotta swap over, and I'm not sure exactly on this screen how to do that, but I've gotta swap over to um, Radio Link 2, which is for the base station that's here at the development block. So I'll try and go into settings, uh, radio, oh, there we go. Should be as easy as that. If I hit two, apply, save. And wait, that should go to 3D, uh, it should go to RTK in just a moment. So while we wait for that to start working, um, yeah, I've got to obviously fill up the chemical and uh, yeah, get into it. So this is the first time the Rogator has been to the development block here. Um, yeah, we haven't had a need for it to be here because we've had the grasshopper here and it is a little bit softer soil here in a lot of it and 
we have liked the grasshopper being here because it leaves a lot smaller footprint. Um, yeah, these big, big sprayers, they do cut some tracks, particularly in the softer dirt. So um, yeah, you just gotta be a bit bit wary, but the grasshopper's done a good job. It's, it's uh, yeah, you, you barely see any marks that it leaves behind. But that is about to change uh, once we get this thing in there. to go. Let's see if we can get this done today. Alright, we've got our RTK. Let's get into it. I saw a helicopter and there's a tree right in the road, but you might be able to just see it there. But, uh, yeah, it must be looking for more pigs. So they've been fairly regularly, uh, whether the government funded or privately funded. Um, yeah, around this area they've been hitting the pigs pretty hard, so they'd be out there looking for some of them. Um, yeah, if you don't manage the pig populations, it becomes a very bad problem. The wild pigs will, they just wreak havoc on all the natural um, environment. So they'll, um, all the native animals get affected by it um, if there's too many. And you just don't want to let them build up numbers because they will build up numbers very quickly. They can have uh, someone will probably correct me on this, but I think they, in a litter, they can have like, you know, eight or so piglets, and they can do that um, at least twice a year. Doesn't take very long at all, and there's a problem. So it'd be good to get uh, some drone footage of the helicopter, but that is not a wise move. You don't want to try and dress up as a pig around here, that's for sure. I see a pig. You won't have seen it on the camera, but there was some around the dam there. They're into them. I hope my mom doesn't come out towards me. I might have to bolt. interesting well guys spraying has stopped and we just can't catch a break actually at the minute um, but that's that's all part of life we are not sure but I think the rogator here has some hydro issues um, first things it sort of seems like it's a pump so this runs two hydro pumps um, and possibly one of them's dead um, and we don't know yet whether it's put contaminated all the system or how far it goes, but um, Yeah, we are gonna I'm gonna fly up to the main farm and grab the gauge set um, To check our pressures on it and then we'll probably drain the fluid and cut open the filters just see if we can find any metal um, But yeah, it's it's a no no more spraying for me today um, and 
The other bit of information is yesterday I was on the Weed It and because I got a bit of a backlog of videos, I thought, oh, I won't worry about recording anything today. I'll have a day off. And it, the 280 that is, developed a miss on cylinder number five, some sort of injector issue, injector wiring issue. Um, so currently the Housem is out of action, the Rogate is out of action, and the Weed It is kind of out of action. It will run, but not, not great. Um, so we're at a bit of a bit of a loss actually what to do but anyway I'm going to fly up grab this gauge and then at least hopefully we'll know a little bit more of what's going on so because I came down here in the row gator I don't have my vehicle but got the trusty old uh, crew cab rodeo here um, you might have seen it in some of the videos um, it's done nearly half it's probably done half a million kilometers because I don't know how, well, the, the speedos work, well, kind of working now, to be honest. It's flickering around a bit. Um, and I'm not doing that fast, but it, uh, yeah, no, it's been a very reliable thing. This was actually bought brand new back in, would it have been 94 or 5, um, for my grandparents. And they used to tow a van around. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a very reliable thing. It's still on the original fuel pump and a few other bits and bobs. So it's uh, been really good. But anyway, I got distracted there. So I'll take it back up to the hill, give it a good run. Um, and the other thing is, is that we've had to park the Rogator in the shed where we can hook a hose up to it to get the chemical out of it to put in the weed it when we get the weed it down here. Um, because yeah, once we take the oil out and whatnot, we're not gonna be able to move that. So uh, yeah sum out you just got to keep smiling and uh yeah just it's just what happens sometimes just ignore the squealing we are uh very much under the pump and sometimes you don't get to uh get to things when you want to so i'll uh quickly put a drum of oil in on the back of my ute um, yeah so I got filters and that just in case um, yeah it's something simple and after we've drained the oil we find something but um, anyway if it's down there it's down there ready to go so that's what I'll do It's not going anywhere. Right, oh, we're just going to start it to see if there's an issue. See what the gauge says. I got to bleed it first, so I'll find somewhere to put you. Well, we've got pressure, good pressure, coming from both the hydro pumps. Um, they're both over 6,000 psi, so um, yeah, a bit of a loss as to what's going on. 
Uh, charge pressures are both the same, good at what they're meant to be, which is, I believe is about 350 psi. Um, we're just going to take these filters off up here. There's one on each hydro. Check them for anything, um, and then we will, yeah, try and suss out whether there's metal in anywhere, or yeah, go from there. I guess it's due for a service anyway, so we'd be replacing the hydraulic oil. But um, yeah, we need to find out why it's doing what it's doing. Righto guys, it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, we've definitely got some major issues. Um, so yeah, Johnny's just been here helping me. Um, first things first, there's a lot of brass material in that. That's all the oil out of the filter. So you can see that. Bit of hard and um, yeah, hard there's a bit a few chunks of... I think that's hard facing. Is that maybe? hard facing or a bit of brass? Well, no, that's oh, brass. brass. But um, the bigger issue is this part of a bearing came through, was in the bottom of the filter here. So, it came out I'm, yeah, I'm imagining that possibly, well, it, it would just about have to come from... I'll have to trace that hose yeah, back. Yeah, well, it might, it might have to come from the pump, because it, that's not making sense what it's doing, because if it was a motor that was die, that died, it wouldn't keep trying to drive itself forward when it was in neutral, but um, anyway, definitely something is not good, so we've got to keep looking. But anyway, that's where we're up to at the minute. Well guys, we're about to call it a day here. I think um, we've found out what we needed to find out and that is that the whole hydrostat system is kaput. Um, and I, well, I guess we don't really even want to think how many thousands of dollars that is, but um, yeah, we'll probably get everything taken off. So all four motors, the pumps and whatever else we can find will be taken off. Do you want to shut the door while you're up there, Johnny, please? Yep. Um, everything else that we can find that related to the hydraulics will need to be pulled off and checked out at the very least but yeah definitely that bearing part of a bearing is from somewhere important so um, what could have happened is a motor might have died and then sent something through the rest of the system and that's where the problems happen but anyway that's where we're at to at the minute um, we probably I'll be busy trying to probably work on the weed at tomorrow or the 280 versatile See if I can find out why cylinder number five isn't working. Um, and then at least if that's going, then we've got some spraying capability. Because at the minute we're three sprayers down and there's weeds still growing. So uh, yeah, we'll see where we get up to tomorrow. Well guys, just to finish off the video, um, we basically have found out that, look, it's probably gonna, kind of worst case possibly could be about fifty thousand dollars which isn't too bad to uh to get all the bits rebuilt that need to be rebuilt on the rogator but we did find out that where the bearings probably came from there's a bit of a weak weak spot in those hydro pumps um there's a swash plate and what that does is that varies your flow um to your motors so the swash plate basically does that and then it's um yeah that's how it, it adjusts now there's a bearing that runs on that swash plate and that's what usually collapses on them i think so um yeah that's what's happened so it still would drive and everything but it just wasn't yeah it was about to catastrophically fail probably but um yeah that's probably what it was so it should really be able to re be rebuilt um hopefully so yeah it's going to take a bit of time to get it all out and sent away but hopefully that can be done in the next week and then it could be a month before it's repaired so that's just a quick update of what the plan is with the rogator but uh but yeah that will be the end of the video so just Hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.